This is a half inch spindle gouge. I bought one of these fancy ones with a long handle. It is actually, this is very good steel. This is the uh, yeah, powder metallurgy steel. Uh, I only have a couple of these high tech chisels. Um, most of my chisels, <laughs> you know, it's like the, the high speed steel chisels that came in in the 1980s. You know, by that time, by that time I already had, you know, 40 chisels. But gradually I replaced my old carbon tool steel chisels with high speed steel chisels. And uh, they do stay sharp longer, but they don't stay sharp, sharp five times longer like the ads claim. Um, they're a little bit, I would say that the advantage of high speed steel is possibly two times, but it's certainly not three, four, five times or whatever they claim in the catalogs. I still use carbon tool steel chisels that I've had for 50 years. And they're fine, and they work great. And maybe you need to sharpen them slightly long, uh, slightly more often. But remember, it's not how often you have to sharpen the chisel. It's how long it takes to sharpen the chisel that matters. <laughs> so if you can sharpen a chisel in seven seconds, and you're not going to experience sharpening procrastination, then it really doesn't matter what kind of steel your chisels are. I think a lot of people spend a lot of money on, on fancy chisels because they're looking for a chisel that stays sharp forever. Well, there's no such thing. The only chisel that stays sharp forever is the one that's in the drawer and never gets used. So if I, for example, I wanted to sharpen this chisel, um, I use a belt machine. I think most people are using belt machines now. Um, I'm just going to show this, including the setup time, should be about seven seconds. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven seconds. I'm back turning. So you would probably not even turn the lathe off while you're sharpening, because what would be the point if you're going to be back in seven seconds? So this is how you avoid. You know, it's funny, whenever I say the word sharpening procrastination, I see people nodding their heads. Like, oh, yeah, we know what that is. <laughs> so if you're experiencing sharpening procrastination, then you should do something about it. Really very important. So I guess the point is, instead of questing for that perfect kind of steel to stay sharp forever, you should be questing for a sharpening system that's so fast and so convenient and so foolproof that you can sharpen in a few seconds. That's very important. Spindle gut. If I was stuck on a desert island with only one chisel and a lathe, it would be a half inch spindle gouge. I mean, you can rough out with a half inch spindle gouge. It's a little slower, but you can do it. And then here's a 3 eighths version here. I've had this guy a long time. You see it's much shorter. Uh, this was probably two inches longer when I bought it. When did I buy this? 40 years ago, and I'm a professional turner, I turn every day. How come I've only lost two inches in 40 years? Because I have a good jig. That's so important. Because with a good jig that's repeatable, you're going to take off less than a thousandth of an inch each time you sharpen. Right? So if I've lost two inches, that means I've sharpened this at least two, probably 3,000 times. And I'm still using it. This chisel is a shallow gouge. These are the kind of chisels that you find at yard sales for a dollar. And um, because in the middle of the 20th century, all spindle turning gouges were made like this. They were these shallow chisels. Um, they, you know, today most spindle turners like to have, uh, you know, the deeper ones. And uh, the one I was just using. I'm already losing. Oh, yeah. So th this is more typical, you know. In the, in the 80s, when Marple started making the spindle gouges out of round stock, and, and they're like this. And the flutes, the flutes in general are deeper, you know, than these shallow type gouges. So these shallow type gouges are made from a flat piece of metal that's been put in, made from a, a flat piece of metal that's simply bent into a shape. And this is the way, you know, that the um, uh, roughing gouges are made. But the other gouges are made from a piece of round steel. And, and the flute has been milled out, cut away to leave the shape. So 
Um, this is this is called a draw cut or drag cutting, um, and you can do it in either direction. Now, the reason this is better than using a skew chisel is because it's much easier. It's much easier to control. It stays in control automatically because the handle is ahead of the cutting and you're pulling it along. So if anything goes wrong, it just pushes the chisel away. Um, so it, it sort of controls itself. If I only had one tool, it would be this. I mean, what do you do with this? Well, you can do both convex and concave shapes with a spindle gouge. And maybe one of the best exercises to do is what's called a uh, spool turning. So spool turning is a, a style of decoration that's very quick. It was really very popular in the middle of the 19th century. Uh, you know, in the 19th century, automatic turning was just beginning to come in. But a lot of beds and furniture parts were made by hand. Um, so you see I'm doing the convex form, and then I'm also doing the, the concave form that's between. And so with one chisel, you can really do a lot. And, uh, you know, with a skew chisel, I think it's harder to round off the top. A lot of people do beads with a skew chisel, and I again, I think that's harder. And then, um, you know, the other thing is, well, what we could do here. The reason the gouge is so versatile. So when I when I slide the tool in like that, there's a limit to the angle that I can achieve sliding the tool in, because it becomes unstable after when I turn up too much. However, if I were making a cove and I want this to be, you know what, I hit that with my elbow. Okay. So the reason I'm going through this very quickly is because I've covered all this in the spindle turning basics lectures that I've done before. And today I'm just doing a little quick review of what the different chisels do. You know, and I wanted to talk about so you see, if I want to get this shoulder, I see where I'm standing, and I've got the chisel up on edge. And that's a very important skill. 